We are running out of focus. TikTok brain isn't a myth. Let's look at the advice for marketing agencies based on new data coming in. In the year 2000, average attention span 12 seconds, 2015 8.25 seconds. And this is before things like TikTok and YouTube shorts were blowing up. Chances are as we're already 20 seconds in, you're already thinking about clicking off the video. If you're a software engineer, this is a problem. Your entire job is being able to focus on difficult problems for hours. You need to be in that flow state. You probably noticed that there's someone on your team that it feels like they've got that pill from Limitless and they're just somehow able to lock in for eight hours straight, get all the, get all the work done and then move on. Well, it's not actually that crazy. The tools you need for reclaiming focus are readily available and free. So in this video, I'm going to cover how going cold turkey will unlock unbreakable focus, why you need to put leisure back in the living room, or you're just going to fall behind and be one of the statistics that we just looked at, and also what a realistic journey for this actually looks like, because the limitless pill isn't real. Nootropics aren't going to give you this unlocked nirvana of coding competency. Right, so why do you need to go cold turkey? Well, for a start, when was the last time you looked at your screen time? How is it that if we're in our early 20s, we're spending on average seven hours a day looking at screens. And this isn't time spent coding and doing productive stuff. This is recreational screen time. Time just spent scrolling through TikTok, watching YouTube videos, looking at shopping, playing video games. Well, it's probably pretty simple. You've got your phone in your pocket at all times. When you're watching a YouTube video or you're playing a game on your phone, you're not thinking about problems. If you think about it like this, you'll start noticing when you use it and why you use it. Have you ever had like a an awkward meetup with an old friend and both of you pull out your phones and just start scrolling almost instinctively? It's because you're, you're self-soothing. And that learned behavior of your brain realizing, ah, if I pick up my phone and start scrolling, I don't have to worry about the thoughts of, oh gods, but do, do I mention the fact it's been a while talking to that person? No, because you, you, you get to scroll, you feel better. And then that starts leaking into every moment of your life when you sit down on the toilet and suddenly you have to think about something that you have to do tomorrow. Why think about it when you can just pull out your phone and watch another video? That's all well and good, but cementing that avoidant strategy is going to have a major impact on your job because what is your job? It's probably solving problems, right? And if you start teaching your brain that every time that there's an issue, oh, let's just pull out the phone and the problem will go away. Well, you're going to get pretty rapidly terrible at your job. Why? Because I mean, what are your options? You either, when you find a problem, avoid it, or you confront it. And I'm not going to go into habit building. <laughs> if you make a habit of every time you are you come against something that you don't want to deal with, you avoid it by coming up with a screen, what's going to ha start happening when you're working? You probably already notice it if you're somebody who doom scrolls, but every time it gets really, really hard, what do you do? Switch tabs, open up YouTube, procrastinate, avoid doing the thing you need to do. Why are you doing it? It's because you've let it become a learned behavior. So how do we get away from that? Well, on my desktops, I use cold turkey, which I wouldn't even recommend setting up. I would just hit the download button, turn it on and say to yourself, I'm not going to turn this off again. This has a pre-existing list of those places that you would go to procrastinate, Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever your poison is, and it just stops you using it on your computer. So what will happen is you'll, <laughs> when you turn this on, you'll be sat there on a hard coding problem. You'll be like, oh, this isn't working for me. I'm going to open up YouTube. You'll type that in, hit enter, and it'll say no. You can't do it. And then all of a sudden, okay, why did I do this? Oh yeah, because I want to be the kind of guy that when I have a problem, I solve it. And you go back to doing what you were doing. A really nice feature of this is that uh, just beneath me here, you can put a password on it. If you're the kind of person that is who <laughs> is so motivated to pro procrastinate, which you might be, if you've been doing it for years, if you've just had free reign of YouTube or whatever, you might immediately be like, okay, I'll quickly go turn it off and then I'll, I'll binge watch YouTube for three hours and then you'll resent yourself for not getting the things done that you wanted to do. Well, you could get your friends to set up a password for this that you don't know and then they'll only allow you to do it if it's a justified reason. Because let's be real, there, there could be a good reason that you needed to use one of the websites it blocks. Maybe a Reddit user has a link to a good streaming service for Rick and Morty. And you've got the boys around and, well, you need to provide. We've all been there. And then whether you have an Android or an Apple phone, both have very good parental controls. And you think, oh, well, I'm not a kid. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The whole reason I do this to myself, actually, is because if you had a kid who was... 13 years old and they were spending seven hours a day just scrolling through TikTok, you'd set up parental controls on the phone. You, you wouldn't want that. You'd want them enjoying life as a kid, going outside, doing things, 
getting their homework done, for example. But if they're spending seven hours on TikTok, that's not happening. And if anything, they're going to struggle in the classroom because they can't concentrate. What makes you think you're any different? You're going to struggle <laughs> concentrating at work because you're doom scrolling on TikTok. And you're going to struggle getting chores done and being a functional adult if you just have access to unlimited fun and entertainment. Set up reasonable limits and don't, don't be a tyrant. Don't make you hate yourself. Like, <laughs> give yourself an allowance but just cut it down. I like to think that I have a pretty good relationship with my phone now and my watch time is down to maybe an hour and a half. Half an hour of reading the news here and there and then an hour of messaging. I don't have you I don't have any scrolling apps, I don't have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, anything on my phone. And I can't then go to the browser because what will happen is you're so used to picking up your phone and going to YouTube that you'll realise, oh I can go on the browser and I can type in youtube.com and it comes up. Not if you've got parental controls on for yourself. And this will bleed into your personal life. You'll, you'll start thinking, oh wow, I'm actually getting all the things that need to be done done. I've got the time to actually start improving my coding ability and maybe putting time into learning soft skills so that I can progress my career. Do you want to be the person that after two years looks back and goes, oh wow, I've achieved nothing because I've just wasted all my spare time? Or do you want to look back and go, oh, I, I ran the ultra marathon a year ago and I started the YouTube channel. I have the time to do the things I do because I'm not wasting my time. There is a fallacy to this though. You can't have the David Goggins grind set of, ah, I'm just going to have no spare time. Every minute's going to be productive. Uh, I'm never going to watch Netflix. I'm never going to watch YouTube again. That's a terrible idea. So when I was training for the ultra marathon that I ran, uh, I used to be the guy where I had a tub of ice cream in the freezer for months and I wasn't going to eat it. I was pretty dialed in with my nutrition. I'd have a couple of scoops whenever like I had friends around. That was it. And when I started training for this, uh, all of a sudden, my body was requiring a lot more food than it used to. And I came in one day from a run and I literally went straight in into the freezer and ate the entire tub in one go that had been sat there otherwise for two months, had no self-control. Going cold turkey with social media, YouTube, whatever it is that you use as a distraction, you will probably experience similar things and that's okay. Like I said just a minute ago, you don't want to completely block out all leisure. You need time to relax. You, you can't just work non-stop because it will start bleeding into your sleep. And when you get poor quality sleep, that's going to affect your work the next day. And you may as well not quit, quit these distractions. So what's the solution to that? Well, I'm willing to bet that you have access to a living room or at least a space that isn't your bedroom, bathroom or whatever it is that your workstation is if you work from home. And if that is the case, use it for what it's made for. Put those apps that you've taken off your phone and your laptop on that screen. Okay, the living room is now your space for for entertainment. With the ice cream thing that I had, okay, I just stopped keeping junk food in the house because I knew that it would affect my training. So, okay, I'll go out for ice cream. Then when I'm sat there at like 10 p.m. and I'm like ready to impulse eat an entire tub of ice cream, it's just not there. I can't do it. And this is having this control of it being in your living room you can't you can't be checking youtube when you're working on your code because you'd have to go into a different room or if you're in the office you would have to go home to scroll through reddit or whatever it is that you're doing that's getting in the way of working on what you should be working on there's um there's a field of psychology called environmental psychology and it's all about how if you do everything in one room like your bedroom is also where your pc is in your game and uh, it's also it's where you work from home because you you work remotely. This is going to affect your sleep. It's going to affect your well-being. Your your brain needs locations and repetitive actions that become familiar. Okay, I'm going into the bedroom now. Chances are I'm going to sleep. Okay, I'm going into the living room now. Chances are I'm relaxing. Okay, I'm going into the office. It's work time. Keep them separate. And this is going to be so much easier if you've already got blockers on your phone and stuff because the bathroom now isn't going to be associated with scrolling on TikTok for an hour. Sat on the toilet when you could probably get, be getting back to something useful. Just an aside for this, if you are going to have things like YouTube and Netflix and whatnot on your TV, if you can, an hour before bed, if that's your relaxation time, switch to something that doesn't use a screen. If you want to learn an instrument, learn an instrument. If you want to read books so that you're still learning, read books. But avoid the screen, it'll pay off. Okay, so lastly, just like I suggested with my ice cream story, the reason that I knew to not keep ice cream in the freezer wasn't because I had this four sense. I didn't have this guy on YouTube telling me, ah, oh, Matt, one day this is going to be, you're not going to have the discipline that you need and you're going to do this thing and it's going to affect your training. I had to make that mistake to learn from it. 
and that's a major part of this is that screen addiction is a real problem that a lot of us have a, a majority of people have these apps on our phones that are designed to capture our attention as much as possible and when you do something like just immediately remove it from your phone and your computer it's going to affect you the same way that quitting any addiction immediately affects a person so you need to be prepared for the reality that the first few months are going to be hard you'll probably find that on day one okay this is going really really well i've quit it all you're motivated because it's something new and then by day two suddenly your brain's gone 24 hours with a quarter as much of the dopamine button being slammed as much as it is and you will probably impulsively try and start turning off your blockers and you'll find yourself watching for i don't know maybe two three hours whatever you were doing before but it'll still be far less than whatever you say you were doing five six hours before you're still in a better place than you were so you'll realize what you've done at the end of the day think fuck's sake I've, I've fallen off the horse let's pick it back up let's turn them on and it's going to be an up and down trend but the point is is at the end of it you'll be in a much better place than where you started don't be afraid to fail i went for a night out last friday and I woke up the next morning feeling a bit sorry for myself and I found myself scrolling through YouTube shorts for about two hours and my screen time otherwise on average for the past three weeks had been below an hour and a half and then in that morning I'd only got two hours into the, the day and I'd already gone well above my average and it was on something that I had to turn off my blockers in order to get into but that's not right because I mean my average is an hour and a half it's low and sometimes <laughs> unforeseen things are going to get in the way you're gonna have a hangover and you're not gonna have the motivation you normally have the same way but when i was training for running sometimes i didn't have a large enough dinner didn't do my didn't count my calories properly was way hungrier than i anticipated and the primal brain kicks in and goes right we're rummaging through the fridge and we're gonna eat all the beef that's, <laughs> that's meant for the meal tomorrow because it's a cook and all that happens is you'll you'll have coping mechanisms you'll learn like i learned not to have ice cream in the freezer okay maybe i can't be trusted to not turn off the parental controls on my phone I'll have my girlfriend set up on my phone so that it's not my decision to turn it off. Or maybe you find that it's overwhelming way too much because you've completely cut back on how much time you spend watching Netflix and maybe you need to remember to, for half an hour after work, sit on the couch, watch some TV. Treat yourself. You've had a hard day at work. You've earned it. I, I'm not surprised that you're trying to break your, your no distraction streak. But that's a lot more of a healthy relationship than just getting in watching shit on your phone shit at your desk on your computer from when you get into when you go to bed and before you know it you'll be the guy in the office where people will look over their shoulder and be like jesus how's that guy still <laughs> how's that guy writing code for hours without interruptions or distractions well because you prioritized it and that's something that people notice you're going to start producing more and you'll be worth more <coughs> Right, so say you get to the end of it and you've got this newfound ability to be far more productive than you were before. Well, how do you harness that? What do you use it towards? Well, if you click this video here, I'll talk you through how I leverage all the spare time I have to train, work full time as a software engineer, train at least an hour a day, run this YouTube channel and still have spare time to do the things that I want to do. So if you click this video here, I'll take you there. I hope that helps. Cheers.